Hey guys, it's Mr. Crayfish and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to create fuel in my vehicle mod. Now this seems to be quite a common question that people ask me and I can see why because there is a lot involved. It's not just a simple crafting recipe. You have to actually craft a couple of blocks, you have to collect some items, you have to set it up all correctly in order to create fuel. So in this video today I'm going to be showing you guys the machines you're going to need, how to set them up and then ultimately how to create fuel. Alright, so there is a uh, handful of things you're going to need in order to create fuel, or I should call it fuelium because that isn't the name of the fuel in the vehicle mod. Uh, the first thing that you're going to need is a fluid extractor, and specifically, you're going to need to craft two of them, and they can be crafted with iron at the top like that, glass, piston, and then a block of redstone. So you're going to need at least two because we actually need to create two different types of fluids and then combine them together in order to create fueling. And in order to combine them, you're going to need to craft a fluid mixer. So this is iron at the top. We got hopper, brewing stand, hopper, and an iron ingot, block of redstone, and an iron ingot. So that will give you a fluid mixer. A couple of other things, or oh sorry, a uh, three more things you're going to need is some fluid pipes, and these are uh, used in order to transport the fluid from one machine to another, and that is crafted with five iron like that, and then two glass, and that re that recipe will actually give you four of these fluid pipes. Uh, let's go ahead, let's grab that. We're also going to need to craft a fluid pump. This is in order to actually get the fluid out of the machinery. And this is crafted with iron ingots like that, hopper, and then a dispenser. Now make sure it is a dispenser and not a dropper, otherwise it will not work. Let's grab those. And then finally, something you may need um, is a wrench because this is going to allow you to control how the pipes actually work and we'll go into a little bit more detail if we run in well I'm gonna, I'm gonna purposely run into the scenario but um, yeah I'll get into more detail when that happens alright so let's get this system sorted out shall we so let's grab the fluid extractors and we're going to place these down. Now, I'm not going to place these down in any sort of particular way because that's kind of up to you to figure out what is the best way to place these. I'm just going to be showing you the bare bones of how fuel is actually created. So, we're going to place a fluid extractor there and I feel like we'll just place one at the back like that. So, we got two ready like this and as you can see, we've got like a tank on the outside so that will indicate that will show you visually if there's any fuel inside of this. So if we go ahead and we right click on here, it's going to bring up the GUI and it says fluid extractor. What we need to do here is we need to power this with some coal. Um, that's the way the machinery in this mod is actually powered is through coal. Um, right now, this doesn't really use electricity and I don't really have any plans to use electricity either so um, it's going to be just kind of like normal furnace fuel i think you can put in actually i think you can put in like wood or anything that burns uh, will power this machine so let's go ahead let's actually grab some of that out so let's grab some coal out we'll just put half a stack in each one so you put this into the um the left left slot over here we actually have another slot here which is not really visible but if you hover over this kind of like um, I actually don't know what shape this is called. I was like, is this a cylinder? This is like a, it's not a pyramid, it's got a circle base. So, um, there's actually an extra slot here and this is where we actually put in our, um, our material in order to extract the fluid from it. Now, what are those materials? Well, you're going to need to get, um, blaze rods and ender pearls. Now in more recent updates of the vehicle mod I have actually increased the output of the blaze rod and ender pearls so you will get a lot more fluid now and uh, these materials were actually you know went through a lot of thought process because when it when it came down to creating the fuel I wanted it to not be like early game but I wanted it to be end game so a thing about you know these two materials is um, blaze rods if you go to the nether you can find a blaze spawner and farm them from there so you have a pretty good supply of blaze rods and then once you get to the end you can easily farm ender pearls because there's a lot more endermen in the end so 
getting about maybe even like a stack of these will have will give you a lot of fuel and hopefully at the end we'll see this because I personally haven't really tried out a lot of survival mode with the vehicle mod and it's been essentially up to you guys um, giving me feedback on the mod um, helping me like actually balance it out so it's gonna be interesting but uh, anyway, let's go ahead. Let's get this started right now So all we have to do is pop the material into that second slot in the GUI and it's going to start the extraction process So I'm pretty sure this takes 30 seconds to extract the fluid So let's pop both of those in now of course you can actually create more of these because um, Two is essentially the bare minimum, but if you had like let's say like an array of you know you could have like an array of you know, 50 of these you're going to be creating a lot more fuel obviously you would need the materials as well um, I'm not sure what like the optimal amount of these machineries of these um, Fluid extractors would be as you can see at the back here. Have a look at this We can see that it has actually extracted some fluid and we can just see it already sitting in the tank there. So now um, Blaze rods will actually extract 300 350 millibuckets of fluid and then for ender pearls they'll actually extract 500 millibuckets so 1000 millibuckets equals one bucket in minecraft so for instance here this would be 1000 millibuckets of water but let's move on to the next step while these are extracting the fluids from it so let's go ahead uh do we have our oh i thought we had our fluid mixer oh yeah we do we do okay let's grab out the fluid mixer now and we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna place this Maybe we'll place it right here. So once we've uh, extracted some fluid from here, what we need to do is actually get the fluid from both of these and put it into um, the fluid mixer. Now, it doesn't really matter which side you put it into here. I did have some sort of indicators on here previously, but you no longer need to put it into the correct one. All you need to make sure is you put both of these liquids here into the fluid mixer but uh, I should mention that this here is an input this here is an input and then this one on the right side is actually an output so uh, we're gonna have to make sure that we place our pipes correctly here and this is moving on to the next step and that is actually getting the fluid from these two machines and putting it into here so um, you're going to need to grab a fluid pump and what we're gonna do is put them on the side of the fluid extractors here so one there and then one there um, I recommend or you should hold shift when doing that so you don't actually open up the GUI to the fluid extractor and then we need to go ahead and grab the pipes now a notable thing about these pipes is that they are directional so um, what that means is we actually have to place the pipes starting from the target so the target being the fluid mixer here and then um, keep placing it until we get to the source which is the pump here so uh, we're gonna go ahead place it on the side of the fluid mixer here and again we're going to shift and right click and then because that's only one block away it's going to connect up straight away but for this next example as you can see if we place it here we have to start from the target so we have to keep going like this keep bringing it back and then bring it to the source here and now it is connected up now these won't extract straight away there is actually some properties to them that you can configure using the wrench here so at, by default you actually need to power these um, fluid mixes with a lever so if you place a lever on the side like that um, as you can see it connects up and then when we flick it down it will extract the fluid so we're gonna do this for now so let's turn on both of those you can see that the fluid is being extracted from um, the extractors here it's being pumped out sorry and then it's being put into the fluid mixer so we have 400 well we have a lot we have 450 millibuckets of blaze juice and then we have 2,800 of the ender sap. Now this here would be useful if you had some sort of redstone configuration. So maybe you want to have a lever that's you know in a different room. You could set up some redstone wire to actually power these. But another way is just simply right click the pump here with the wrench and it will change the mode. So this now requires the signal to be off. So um, I think uh, I'm not sure I think it oh yeah it does extract it um, so if you were to power this with redstone it means that it won't pump but when there's no power to it 
it will actually extract it. But if we right click it one more time, it would go into a power mode called always active. So it will always um, extract fluid from the pump regardless if it's powered or not. So now that we've uh, figured this out, let's go over to the fluid mixer here and let's start this process. So this again is uh, very simple and we need to power it with some fuel. So we're gonna go ahead, grab some coal out, pop that into that left slot. And then here we actually need another ingredient um, or another material. Uh, no, I would call it an ingredient. Uh, and that is glowstone dust, something very a very interesting property about that I thought would you know be a cool process in order to make um, you know fuelium and all we have to simply do is pop it into this slot here and as soon as we do that it's going to start the process so as you can see it is now combining the blaze juice and the ender sap in order to create fuelium so it's a little bit of a longer process as you can see it's only doing 40 millibuckets um, at every every time here so for it to go through this it's gonna take quite a bit but once you leave that going for a while you're gonna have a lot of uh, fuel going here I wanted to you know um, I was actually going to increase this in one of the latest updates but I thought I would keep it the same because I, what you could do here if you wanted to is actually um, split this pump off and create more of these fluid mixes um, and one way we could do that is simply just by getting, we'll get another fluid mixer here, right? Pop that there, and then we're going to go ahead, have a pump. Um, actually, let's just rearrange this a little bit just so the pipes um, connect up a little bit better. So we need to get some of that over here. So let's keep placing it like this. Not really the best job. Place it like that. And then one thing about these pumps, the properties of these is let's say it's connected to two pipes, it's going to share the fluid between the two. So 50% will go that way and then 50% will go up. And let's go ahead, let's do that for here as well. So it is now going to share the fluid between the two mixers and let's go ahead. Oh, it's actually, uh, it's actually finished it. Oh, so it looks like it's not going to put any. Oh no, it did actually put some in there. Cool, cool, cool. So if we go ahead and we power this one now, we can actually have double the production output. So ooh, we still got to wait on some of that uh, that uh, special blaze juice over here. So in a second here, we should have some blaze juice. And then we also need to grab out some glowstone dust. Pop that into there. Um, something I haven't mentioned yet is that there is the uh, possibility to actually add hoppers onto these so maybe you want to automate it even further uh, you can actually put hoppers on these to automatically insert um, the fuel and also the material the ingredient there in order to create the fluid and then same applies for the fluid mixer you can actually input the glowstone dust and you can also input the fuel as well with hoppers so maybe you have a mod that adds in item pipes you can actually use those as well it's all compatible with all the different pipes that have been added in modded Minecraft. But as you can see, we have created pretty much almost two buckets of fuel so far in this short period of time. So if this was just left going over, you know, an entire Minecraft day, you're going to be looking at maybe at least like 10 millibuckets, maybe even more. I reckon even more than 10 millibuckets of fuel from this system here. And this is just a really basic one. Um, if you were to create even more of this, like let's say we just created an, an exact replica of this here, we're going to have a lot more fuel. Now one final step to this process is storage because we do not want to keep the fuel inside of the fluid mixer. We want to put it off into something a little bit more permanent. So the final thing that we can do is actually craft a barrel, oh no, it's not a barrel, a fuel drum. So there's two different types of fuel drums. We have a fuel drum and then we have an industrial fuel drum. So the difference between the two is the industrial fuel drum can hold a lot more fuel. And I forgot how much it actually holds. It doesn't really 
tell me. I think this one holds um, 40, uh, 40 millibuckets and then this industrial holds 75 millibuckets of fuel. So let's go ahead, let's place this over here. And I'll place one for that one. Let's go ahead, let's grab out the fluid pump. So we need to put a fluid pump on either side. I think, I don't think you can actually place it on the front face. I think I just disabled that. We'll see, we'll see in a second here. If we go ahead and we do that, and then we also just turn that to always active. Um, is it extracting it? Okay, it doesn't look like it is. So you can't place anything on the front face of it, but you can place it on the side there like that. Go ahead, let's do that. Make sure it's in the uh, always active mode. Let's do that here as well. Always active. And now we should see that the fluid is going, was being pumped out and then being put into these fuel drums. And to see how much fluid is actually inside of the drums is really simple. All you have to do is just shift. Now there might be a little bit of a bug uh, because I'm using shaders right now, so it's a little bit hard to see, but you might be able to notice it, but there's like a kind of like a little teeny bar right there. Um, that, see that little green line there? If you're using normal Minecraft without shaders, you would see this. Maybe I'll just turn it off real quickly. So I've turned off shaders now, so it should be a lot more clear to see what is inside the fuel drums now. So if we shift, we can see that we have fuel in inside. And according to the bar, there's only a little teeny bit in the bottom of the barrel. All right, so now that we've uh, extracted the fluids, we've combined them, and then we've stored them into some fuel drums here. Uh, do we actually have some? There we go. We have some fuel in this one. How do we actually get the uh, fuel out of the fuel drums and put it into a vehicle? The most important part, we need to be able to power these. Well, um, we actually need some jerry cans. Now, I forgot to show the recipes for the fuel drums over here. So, as you can see, the fuel drums require Iron ingots, ing ingots at the top and bottom, block of iron on either side, and then a bucket in the middle. So that's for the regular fuel drum, and then for the industrial, it's very similar. Iron ingots at the top, and then block of iron like that, and then bucket in the middle, middle, and that will give you an industrial fuel drum. And then we have the jerry cans here. So that requires iron ingots, a bucket, and then rose red at the top like that. And then for the industrial version of it, we need cactus. Um, green bucket at the top, iron ingots, and then block of iron, and that will give you an, an industrial fuel drum. So let's grab those out right now. Now, I accidentally grabbed them in creative mode, which means they actually have fuel in it already, but as you can see now, they have 0% fuel. So we simply go up to a jerry, or a jerry uh, sorry, not, not a jerry can, a fuel drum, and we right click here, and as as you can see in the bottom left there, the bar there is actually going up very, very slowly. And we can see that we, ha we have 35% fuel in the jerry cans. Keep extracting this. Keep holding down right click. There's currently no animation uh, for it. Uh, is that still going? Oh, actually, we have to just not shift, sorry. Don't shift when doing that. And it looks like we've uh, extracted all the fuel. Yep, we've extracted all the fuel from that. Uh, fuel drum there and we're ready to fuel it up. So you need to go up to your vehicle and you need to find the fuel port on it So it's different for each vehicle But on the ATV here you can see that is actually under the handlebars So you need to be looking directly at the fuel port if you're looking You know even here or anywhere else. It's not going to work. You actually need to be looking at it So all you simply do is look at it hold right click and it's going to fill up the fill up the uh, the ATV with fuel. And if you hop on the vehicle now, you can see that at the top left there we have um, 2,560 millibuckets of fuel in the ATV. Uh, I'm currently in creative mode, so it won't actually um, use any of the fuel. But if we were in survival mode, as you can see. It is slowly going down now. But that's going to end off this video today, guys. If you found it helpful, go ahead, drop a like down below. Let people know that this is a good video. Also, also subscribe if you want to keep up to date with kind of all my technical videos and tutorials because my second channel is where I do all this kind of in-depth stuff and take stuff from my main channel and go into a little bit more detail because I know there's people out there that like to know everything that has changed rather than kind of the major things. But anyway, that's it. I'll catch you guys later. Bye.